Parents of Reddit, what are your I looked away for one second stories? My son was three. We were leaving Target. He left my sight as I was adjusting my bags. Maybe two seconds, tops. Poof. He was gone. I try to act cool, but my true crime podcast obsession got the best of me. The store locks down. We are all looking for him. People are checking cars outside. I'm calling my son's name louder than any intercom system. We were just about to call police. And then my toddler slides out of the cart area and acts like, sup? He decided it would be a most excellent idea to shimmy underneath the carts and sit there as the world turns inside out searching for him. I hugged him and yelled at him for a good 10 minutes, ugly sobbing. 100 100 grateful for my target folks. We catered lunch for them as a huge thank you and sorry my kid is in a hole. You are so kind for catering lunch. Our firstborn was about 18 months. Walking but not that agile. I was downstairs on the computer. Wife yelled down she was using the bathroom and for me to watch him. We misunderstood each other so he was alone for about 3 minutes. She comes out asking where she is and he is nowhere to be found in the house. Thinking he's just hiding we start a full search only to notice the back patio door is slightly open after a few minutes hunting. Growing concern at this point but figuring he just snuck out back. A full search of the fenced, gated yard shows nothing. Now the heartbeat is going. Start running out and down the street. Find him two blocks down. He was heading to the park which would have required crossing two roads, one of which was a busy one. Nice neighbors found him and were walking him home as they'd recognized us from previous walks. Years later the little neighbor girl would remind us how he saved his life. Needless to say child locks went on all the doors in the house after that. I was the kid in this scenario. I was about four years old and wanted a carrot to snack on. Mind you, the carrot absolutely had to be peeled and no other way was acceptable to me lol. My mum was exhausted and laying down on the couch but didn't mean to doze off but hey, parenting is tiring and she did deserve that nap lol. Instead of disturbing her I decided to attempt to peel the carrot myself and slice TF out of my thumb and freaked out. I remember the blood vividly. Lol she freaked out too but managed to stop the bleeding and doctored me up. Thinking I learned my lesson because I was presumably a smart kid she laid back down after that incident. No, dot she should have known better. I proceeded to stick a pair of tweezers in the light socket of the kitchen while snacking on my carrot. Shocked myself good and blew the power out. I had just moved into a new neighborhood on a cul-de-sac with my two young daughters, ages 5 and 2. I walked out to the community mailbox to grab my mail and met my next door neighbor while I was there. We chatted for a couple minutes when I heard my older daughter yelling from the front door, Hey dad. Younger daughter, YD, is naked. I look over at my house and YD is standing at the end of the driveway as naked as the day she was born. I locked eyes with YD, and with a laugh she turned around and started bolting the opposite way from me up the street. I quickly said goodbye to the neighbor, tucked my mail under my arm, and started chasing her down the block. I ended up scooping her up with my other free arm a block later while she was laughing her head off. All of the other neighbors got a good laugh seeing me chasing her down. Couldn't get mad at her as it was so funny, and was impressed she could get undressed so fast. Went to the toilet, leaving the newborn asleep on a blanket on the floor on top of a large fluffy carpet. Three-year-old was watching TV nearby. Came back to find baby literally rolled up in carpet like a dead body, three-year-old sitting on top, with a cushion under him too. Still don't know how he did it at all let alone so quickly, and how the baby was totally chilled and unharmed. When my youngest was born, my third child had just turned two. Our ped looked at me very sternly and said, never ever leave them alone together, even for a second. They will drop a baby to see if they bounce, they will smother them trying to wrap them up like a doll. Never leave them alone. I'm glad he told me that BC she totally would have done something nuts. Woke up once and my two sons had climbed out of a window onto a flat roof. They were one and three. I still don't know how they even got the window open. Convinced my triplet siblings at three years old to climb up the ladder onto the flat roof while dad ran inside to grab the water he'd prepared for us before going outside. I was making dinner for my twin 18 Mo when boy twin starts to fuss, so I carefully put the knife about a foot away from the edge of the counter. I intentionally put it away from the edge because my girl twin is not to be trusted. I go change my boy and turn around and my girl is casually holding my large, sharp chopping knife. 
I had to get it from her like a hostage negotiator so she wouldn't run away with it. I couldn't figure out how she got it so I looked at the video and as soon as my back was turned she was grabbing the cutting board to pull the knife closer and then immediately skipped over the carrots and peeler to grab the knife. I was clearly correct in not trusting that feral child. That moment when they've got something dangerous and your instinct is to close the distance but you can't because then they're going to run with it. Fing stressful as f. I swear that is my life constantly now. Today alone I have had to chase her for a bag of marshmallows, a bottle of ketchup, and a bowl which she ended up throwing on the floor and shattering. All while her sweet angel brother just played quietly in the living room. If I don't get her in daycare soon, I am going to run away to live in the woods. What do you have? A knife? https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equals 5 pjpco 6 j 7 k closing parenthesis this is my kid in a few years woman face palming husband reading a sign about watching your children on the trail at gooseberry falls in mn looks up to see middle child heading to the edge of trail people fall every year some die i was further down the trail with the youngest he kept a firm grip on her for the rest of the walk. We moved into our new house on Halloween in 2001. Most of the heavy lifting was done, so the wife decided to begin unpacking the important stuff and I would take our 8-year-old daughter out trick or treating. We stepped outside and I realized I left my phone. Standing on the front porch I tell her, don't move, I have to get my phone. I'll be right back. Do not move. Narrator, she moved. New neighborhood. Kids and parents everywhere. I'm running up and down the street frantically and after about 15 minutes later I spot a family, mum and dad and a handful of rugrats, with mine in tow. They had a good laugh telling me they just turned around and there she was, having appeared out of nowhere. Decided to stay close assuming some hysterical parent would eventually come running. Edited to thank the kind awarding folks. You gotta really wonder what's going on in a kid's brain to interpret, don't move, as, wander off with this whole ass family you've never met before. It was candy, pure and simple. Not me but my wife. Our two younger kids are 14 months apart. When our daughter was around 3 and our son was 2, my wife went into the garage to grab a frozen pizza out of the deep freezer and one of the kids, not sure which one, shut the door and locked my wife in the garage. She was banging on the door and could hear the little boogers in there laughing at her. My wife was not amused, she got a flathead screwdriver from my toolbox and managed to unlock the door. This all took 15 minutes or so, when she got in the house they were in their room watching cartoons and eating cookies they managed to steal. They would have left her out there all night. It's funny now 10 years later but my wife was scared pullis. We have kept a spare key hidden in the garage ever since. One of my uncles locked grandma out of the house once when he was a toddler. She heard him singing, flour, sugar, coffee, four, sugar, coffee, flour, sugar. Sure enough, when she got back in, there was a pile on the floor of flour, sugar, and coffee that he'd scooped out a spoonful at a time. She said it was worth cleaning up the mess that she knew exactly what he was up to the whole time she was outside. My little sister locked me out of the house when I took the garbage out. Had to go round back to the deck sliding door because she said she didn't know how to unlock the front door. She was maybe four or five. Not my kid, but about 20 minutes ago a toddler just kinda wandered into my apartment. I had the door unlocked so maintenance could come in and out while working on something. My daughter and I heard the TV go on and sure enough some little blonde girl with cute pigtails is just plopped down watching cartoons. Lol. Her parents were probably pooting bricks. What happened? Did you find the parents or did she just leave? We got too attached to return her, but I'm not sure what to name her yet. Haha, <laughs> I wasn't sure where to start. She didn't look like any of the neighbor kids in my building. My daughter and I were in my room goofing around for a couple hours at least. Over her usual loud, cheery self and the music we had on the kid was probably there for a good while. Didn't want to make a huge situation and get the police involved so I ended up just calling the landlord. She was next door anyway and familiar with a lot of the tenants, their kids. Ended up being a lady I sometimes chat with while waiting for the bus. It's a big complex though, so she must have wandered pretty far. She only looked to be around two I'd guess. My daughter was 18 months old. Standing in between my husband and me in the kitchen, arm distance from both of us. She slipped, fell and broke two front teeth. The first kid is for practice. That's why my big sis has more scars than me. God I wish more parents admitted to poo like this happening.
I'm an early childhood teacher and poo like this be happening at home while at the center a kid intentionally runs smack into a wall for no reason and gets a tiny wee bruise and parents want to get the cops involved. I had been drinking scotch one evening while doing dishes. So I'm standing at the sink. I hear my three-year-old stumble into the room, pull a chair out from the table and climb up. I'm not thinking anything of this until I hear a small voice say, juice, as I turn to watch him dump about half an ounce of single malt into his mouth. This was immediately followed by a gasp, then he turned bright white, then bright red. He went to bed early that night. What do you do with a drunken toddler? What do you do with a drunken toddler? What do you do with a drunken toddler midway through the evening? My sister was four when she had her first root beer float. One of the dads in the group left a bottle of beer in the kitchen, which inadvertently got mixed into my sister's root beer, bottles looked similar. Her immediate response was, I don't like this, promptly followed by everyone telling her root beer floats were great and to keep trying it. She quit a third of the way down the tall glass, after which my mom came over to taste it and show her how great root beer floats were. Mom screamed, this is beer. My sister couldn't walk straight and had to be carried upstairs to bed. I glanced at the salt, and toddler daughter grabbed a whole new potato off my plate and shoved it in her mouth. She then tried to swallow it and choked. Longest 15 seconds on my life getting it out of her. Learn child first aid people. They are suicide machines as toddlers. Asterisk edit thanks for the awards kind strangers, asterisk. I'm only four years into this parenting gig, but so far it seems like the number one job responsibility is, stop child from intentionally dying. That's pretty much all you do until they are about eight or nine. She made it to 18 last week, I do wonder sometimes how, smiley face. When my daughter was little, probably about three, she went with me to shop for some tools. I turned away to look at something and heard behind me, Daddy, what's this? Ah, uh, honey, that's an axe. Please give it to me. She did, and all was well, but I'm glad my wife wasn't there she would have panicked. That moment when you see your kid holding something sharp and or dangerous and you have to stay super calm so they don't make any sudden movements. Turning around and seeing a toddler holding a steak knife, you might as well be face to face with a bear. I've never seen a child with two panicky parents. There's always at least one stone-faced problem solver while the other blathers helplessly from the side. God help any kids without calm parents. So we took the kids, 7, 3, 3 and 3, to a water park. One of us would stay in the kiddie area with two of the triplets and the other parent would take one of the 3 year olds and the 7 year old on a ride. It was working pretty well. Note, the kiddie area was mostly contained, but there was no gate or anything. At one of the swaps, we blinked for a second and our adventurous 3 year old was gone. Instant OF panic. Get security there, staff is looking, I'm running around looking. Anyway, we eventually found him. He had ridden a water slide with my wife earlier, and decided that was fun, I'm gonna do it again. The three-year-old had gone back to get in line for the water slide by himself, and they found him about two from the front of the line. At least you didn't have to describe him to security, just pointed another one. Biggest question, did he get to have his turn? My toddler at the time grabbed a stick of butter out of the fridge and tossed it into the fish tank. Minutes later all the fish were floating dead in the fish tank. Last time we owned fish. I'm a former aquarium hobbyist with a fish-obsessed toddler. I will not get her a fish tank until she stops dropping every available object into her dad's coffee cup. So far the worst has been having to leave the remotes out to dry for a few days, a fish tank could be so much worse. But my daughter and my niece decided to feed my fish once without asking. They poured every single morsel of fish food I owned into there. Huge tub of flakes, even huger bag of pellets, dried bloodworms. It was anarchy. Caught it early enough that the fish didn't die, they must have just thought they were in heaven. But what a pain in the ass to clean. I'm not the parent in this scenario, but I'll share the story anyway. I was in college, and had a club meeting. Some of the people involved were non-traditional students with a toddler, and they had the kid there at the time. Okay, no big deal, he was pretty much entertaining himself. The parents were trying to pay attention to what was going on, much like the rest of us, when this one guy jumps out of his chair with a yell and grabs the kid. Turns out the kid had been playing with his dad's keys and was headed for the electrical outlet with them. Do electrical outlets talk to kids? 
because kids are always drawn to them as if the outlets are saying Kami H H H H H H here re. I had taken my four-year daughter into a public toilet in France, which was next to a main road. As we left, I let go of her hand for a split second as I looked away to close the door behind us. When I looked back she was running into the main road as she'd seen her mum on the other side. From where I stood, my view of the road was obstructed so I couldn't see if any cars were coming, and she had gone too far for me to catch her. By a complete miracle, she got safely over the road. It sends shivers down my spine remembering the helpless terror I felt when I saw her in the middle of the road. My mother was standing by the side of the road with me, 8, and my brother, 5. She let go of my brother's hand for just one second while she searched in her handbag for the keys to unlock the car. My brother raced into the road in front of a car. I can't remember if it was my mother or if I grabbed him, this was nearly 20 years ago, now. But luckily one of us hauled him back so he didn't actually get hit. My mother was so shaken after that I don't think she let go of my brother's hand near roads until he was in his early teens, which went over so well with a boy his age. She's been joking ever since that he's not allowed to cross the road by himself until he's 30. This is why I didn't laugh when my best friend, Leisha's, her troublemaker 3 Y. Oh child in public. He did this one too many times and she was just fine, band around our wrists it is then. I actually don't think it's bad either, reading this thread. Must be super scary. I was the child in question, two years old at the time. We were at the beach, where about two feet into the sea there's a shelf where it suddenly gets twice as deep. My parents were distracted by my brother, so didn't notice me wander into the surf. When they next looked up, all they could see was my hat away floating on the water. Panic set in, and my dad sprinted into the sea. Discovered that I was still wearing the hat, and was somehow floating completely vertical with just the hat showing above the water. Edit. Turns out this is not that uncommon. Remember, when you're near a body of water, never stop watching the kids. Jesus? I work from home. My son is usually with me while I work in the evening. One night I take a call, he was sitting on the floor next to me playing with his cars, he's three. The next minute, I look over and watching him as he is flying through the air next to me. He had climbed up on our table and just launched himself off. I always mute myself when I'm not speaking when he's home so thank god the customer didn't hear my oh my god as I caught him lol. My sister baked some cookies to share at work, and when her three-year-old daughter seen him on the plate on the counter she asked for one. Instead of explaining she wasn't allowed to have one, my sister lied and said they were, yucky, implying it was a bad batch. My sister, confident that her lie was successful turned her back to finish cleaning up. She heard the plate being removed from the counter and turned around just in time to see all the cookies slide off the plate into the garbage. Her daughter smiled and just said, yucky. Is that what people call instant karma? Left my son at the kitchen counter while preparing pancakes. One minute he's there, the next thing I know he successfully empties the syrup bottle all over the couch. I mean puddles of syrup in our cushions and pillows. First time as a parent I remember calling my mum crying because I was at such a loss for how to clean it all up. I was round at my buddy's place, he had kids about seven and five. Both super nice kids, nice family. We were sitting in the garden with a beer. The eldest had a foam-covered baseball bat that he'd been hitting foam balls with. Out of nowhere, he calmly walks up behind his dad and takes a full home run swing at his head. Fing clobbers him. This bat is coated in foam but it's still wood beneath it, so it's basically mid-level assault, maybe attempted murder. Dazed, the dad turns round to defend himself, at which point the five-year-old sees his opportunity and grabs the beer from the table and starts chugging it. Not just drinking it, full-on frat boy chugging it out of nowhere. In the three seconds it takes me to recover from the shock and reach across the table to stop him, the kids drank about two-thirds RDs of the bottle. Not much for an adult, but AFing skinful for a kid weighing about one stone. And hash X200B. Within about three seconds, we went from nice family barbecue to concussed adult, domestically abused by a psychopathic seven-year-old, and a wasted five-year-old. Went real dark real quick. I catered a funeral about a decade ago. It was outside in the family's yard. At some point, we began to notice that one little girl, maybe four to five was walking from table to table and drinking from various cups. That little girl was trashed. She just starts having the best time. Running, screaming, spinning in circles. I assume you all know where this is going. 
she eventually turned into a fountain of vomit. My four-year-old at the time, she just turned 17, grabbed a freshly made margarita I had just set down on the coffee table and chugged it. It was one of those pre-mixed margaritas that come in a jug at around 14% alcohol, but of course I had added an extra shot or so of cheap tequila to the glass. I didn't know what the F to do with a drunk toddler, but I sure felt like a pooty dad. I swear babies that can't even flip over yet can teleport short distances when no one is observing them. You put that thing down in one spot, turn your back on it for one second and then it's moved a few feet away. They can do this because they don't understand how it's impossible. When babies learn enough about physics and object permanence to be able to move and navigate they lose the ability to teleport, because then they know enough to figure out it can't be done. Mine was so bad about this, though we knew from the start he was rolling. Literally had just been born, put in the clear plastic crib thing, and I just watch this newborn baby roll over to his stomach. Nurse comes in, doesn't believe me, flips him and he rolls over again. Heard, he shouldn't be able to do that, about 50 times. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a baby should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The baby, of course, flies anyway because babies don't care what adults think is impossible. Getting ready for my first Christmas party at a company. It's a family affair. We all look great. Hubby was already in the car, ran to the bedroom for something I forgot, we were running a little late. Ended up going to to the party with my three-year-old looking like a smurf because he thought my blue nail polish was just like mommy's makeup. Still to this day don't know how he got the cap unscrewed because he's 10 now and can't open an already cracked bottle of water to save his life woman shrugging. Not a parent but the kid in the story. I have two younger sisters. They are twins and only 12 months younger than me. When I was three and they were two, me and sis one put sis two in the washing machine while my mom went for a pee. She came back right in time because we were already playing with the buttons. Christ, that is terrifying and can happen so easily. I was the kid in this situation, but when I was about three, 16 now, my mom was helping me out of the shower and she turned around to grab a towel, turned back mere seconds later, and I was standing in the same spot but my face was covered in blood. I somehow managed to fall onto the rail for the sliding door and shoot back up to my feet instantly. I passed out shortly after and went to the ER 17 stitches in my forehead, major concussion. I was lucky to survive TBH. Oh, jeez. That's the kind of story that gets child protective services involved. As an adult, I was in the doctor's office once with a huge bruise on my upper arm. The doctor questioned me about it, and I had to tell her my completely bizarre story about a weekend trip, a Belgium horse, a cart, and some impenetrable brush. A day or two later, I realized how unbelievable the story was. I was probably very close to getting labeled as a victim of spousal abuse. Edited to add, I was invited by a friend to go on a two-day trail ride one weekend. Mary had two Belgium horses and a two-wheel cart. A third buddy rode one horse bareback and the other we hooked up to the cart. The trail ride mostly consisted of people with saddles on horseback. Many camped out but others, like us, had an RV. So we're on the trail and Mary is always looking ahead to see that there is enough width to the trail for her cart to go through. 99% of the time, there was plenty of space. Like open grassland. But there was this one time. There was a ravine in front of us with brush close on both sides. Mary realizes there is a problem but backing up a horse and cart is not a good move especially when there are trail riders behind you. Meanwhile, the horse seemed to have forgotten that he had a cart attached to him. Mary says, hold on, and we go ahead. Now a horse without a cart would just kind of step down into this little ravine and lurch its way up the other side. Our horse suddenly realized that he had this dumb cart behind him so he kind of jumped the last little bit into the ravine and plodded his way up the slope going out, rocking Mary and I on the bench, and carrying some brush with us. I got knocked into a vertical part of the cart and got a bruise that easily covered half my upper arm. Best. Weekend. Ever. Or at least top 10. I was sitting in a high chair, climbed out of it, onto the counter, and stole my mother's coffee. All she did was to put her shoes at the door, three feet away. One thing I've learned from this thread, small children have the ability to teleport. And drink 12 ounces of coffee in less than a minute. They'll tell one on my mother's behalf. 
When I was three or so, we lived in an apartment with an arched set of monkey bars out back. A standard rule was that I shouldn't play on them when she wasn't around to supervise. Well one day I was playing on them when the phone rang, so she ran inside to answer it, but not before ensuring that I'd gotten off the monkey bars and repeating her usual warning. One of the things she never allowed was for me to try and walk atop said monkey bars, and already being primed to play on them, I seized the opportunity. I'd made it to about the middle before I lost my balance, and fell through the bars, wanging my head on them as I passed and then landing more or less head first onto hard, packed dirt. Had a stutter for years after that, and I suspect the process of getting over that is why I don't speak as if I grew up where I actually did. This was one of many, many times that I got hurt the instant I chose to disregard her warnings. Also included are the time I crushed my finger in a dumpster, the warning being to come and get her should I find the lid closed, my sister and I judged that she could toss it open and I could just time throwing the trash inside. We were mistaken. The time I was impaled on a tree, I was told to not climb cedar trees, especially the one that I climbed and then promptly slipped out of only to be helpfully caught by a branch through the groin on the way down, a number of bicycle wrecks and pseudo-fencing accidents, and, well, you get the idea. I feel very sorry for your mother. When my sister, brother and I were young, probably two, four and five or thereabouts, my mum left the room for two minutes and in that time we had managed to spray an entire container of baby powder around the room. She said it looked like it had snowed in there. Growing up we had a shed with our laundry room attached to our porch. My mom had me sitting on the floor of the porch playing with some toys, I was about two, while she was doing laundry. I was just out of her eyeline for the time it takes to start a load of laundry, but by the time she turned around I had somehow managed to find a snake and had picked it up and was playing with it. My daughter, five at the time, was very defiant. I was four weeks postpartum, dressed in sweatpants and a nursing tank. No shoes. She wouldn't get out of the car in the kiss and drop lane. I hopped out to open her door, not thinking about what would happen next. She locked the doors. Here I am, lactating, blocking the line, ready to either collapse in an emotional sobbing heap or break the windows out of the car. This escalated to the entire parking lot being rerouted before my neighbor showed up with spare keys. When Dee Dee saw her with the keys, she hopped out of the other side, yelled, have a good day, as she ran into the school. Oh my, good luck. On more than one occasion my daughter jumped into her bath fully clothed. I was turned around to get the bubbles or her toys or something and then S-P-L-O-O-S-H. She was like to, lol. Most recently I was sitting down after finishing some chores and she walked up to me really proud with a chunk of her hair. Look mama, I cut my hair. She just turned five. Asterisk TLDR, infant son rolled off the couch, cracked his skull, and had to have brain surgery, asterisk. I had just finished changing my six-month-old son's diaper, with him lying on the couch, with a changing cloth underneath. I turned to throw the diaper in the trash right next to the couch, and in the two seconds I didn't have my hands on him, he rolled of the couch, he'd never even rolled over before. He hit the ottoman, which spun him back the other way, and he smacked his head on the hardwood floor. He cried, but calmed down after a few minutes. There was no sign of swelling, no blood, etc. We were worried about a possible concussion, so we kept a close eye on him the rest of the day. When it was time for us to go to bed, we decided to stay up and watch a movie instead, and I went in and checked on him partway through the movie while my now ex-wife went to make some popcorn. I changed his diaper, and he woke up a little. One of his pupils was overdilated, and the side of his face had started to droop like he was having a stroke. We immediately grabbed our diaper bag, jumped in the car, and drove to the hospital, which fortunately was only 10 minutes away. I walked into the ER carrying my son and told the nurse that I thought he was having a stroke. She checked him, took us to a back room, and within minutes the room was swarming with medical personnel. A doctor informed us that it looked like our son had cracked his skull internally, and there was swelling in the brain. They would need to perform open cranial surgery immediately to relieve the pressure on the brain. The doctor told us that they weren't sure he would survive the surgery, but it was the best option. We were whisked into another room, separated, and asked questions about exactly how the injury had happened. They wanted to make sure it wasn't due to abuse, because they said that falling off the couch onto the floor shouldn't have had the force to crack an infant's skull. 
At this point, his mum and I were both sobbing, just trying to figure out what was going on and whether our son was going to be okay. When they finally finished interviewing us, they brought us into a waiting room. I called my parents to tell them what was happening, and then another doctor came to tell us that the surgery had gone well, but that they'd had to remove around two-thirds of his brain tissue due to the blood saturation damage. He showed us an X-ray or MRI they had done just before actually beginning cutting that showed what looked like a crescent moon of grey matter clinging to the left edge of the interior of the skull, with the rest of the image filled by blackness, which the doctor told us was blood. He advised us that even if he survived the rest of the night, our son would likely never learn to walk or talk. When the surgery was done, they brought him to us. He was still groggy from the anesthesia, but other than being, very understandably, fussy, he seemed otherwise like his normal self. Of course, there was also a large incision wound, stitches, and tubes coming out of his head to drain off the excess fluid. It was around 2 a.m. at this point but I called our religious leader, who I was also good friends with, to tell him about the situation. He came and prayed with us, and offered a blessing for our son, just that he would make it through the night. This story is already getting much longer than I want to type on a Reddit comment, but he survived the night. He survived the next week, and the next month, and every time the doctors saw him, they said it was a miracle that he was alive. He had mild seizures for a few months after the operation, and when he first started to crawl, he would sometimes just stop and freeze for a second or two for no apparent reason, but remarkably, the one-third of his brain matter that they left grew to fill the rest of his brain cavity. The blood vessels from the left side of his brain spread and grew all the way across to cover the right side where the original vessels had been destroyed. He learned to talk and walk within the regular time frames, and has had no noticeable residual effects of his traumatic injury. When we took him back to the hospital six months later for his final post-op checkup, every one of the nurses said it was a miracle that he was even alive, much less talking and moving around like a normal one-year-old. Asterisk edit, added TLDR at the start asterisk. Went to pee. Put my kiddos in their room with the door open and the gate up. I also had the bathroom door open. Come out to find a dozen eggs cracked on the kitchen floor and into the butter and my youngest covered in peanut butter naked. My now ex-husband was sleeping. I walked into our room woke him up and tagged out. My brain was fried at that point. To this day I have no clue how they escaped, they are 16 and 18 now. My siblings did something like this when I was still too little to join in, we jokingly call it the Great Butter Incident of 99. My oldest sister was sitting on the counter in undies with a tub of margarine and a whisk dipping the whisk flinging the butter on the kitchen floor my other two sisters were butter skating and getting that butter wherever their tiny fingers could get it. We didn't pass the military housing cleaning inspection when we left cause my mum couldn't get all the butter out of there. When I was four I had two sisters who were three and two. My parents used gates to keep us in a room but obviously we wanted to get out. I got on the wheelchair and told both my sisters to push me on the gate. We kept ramming it until it broke and next thing you know we were free. Children are effing stupid but when it comes to being an ass to their parents they are literally Einstein. My son is in first grade this year, and we've been doing virtual learning. He's also on the spectrum, but he's able to do normal classes so far. I have a desk and his computer set up in his room. While his lesson was going on, he accidentally spilled some water on himself and his desk. I'm just like, it's okay. Hold on a second. I'm going to get you a towel. So. I run downstairs to get him a towel. I'm gone for 10 seconds. I come back upstairs, he took off his shirt and his pants, and was searching his drawer for dry clothes in his underwear, while on camera. I feel like I did the slow motion action movie, new. When I went to turn the camera off, I'm pretty sure his teacher at least saw him stripping down to his underwear, but she didn't say anything. Lol. I think this isn't the first time the first grade teacher had to deal with that. Young kids don't like wearing clothes. Lol. You're right. Honestly, I've seen what she has had to deal with during virtual school. My son getting almost naked is nothing compared to some of these kids. My year 18 month old son was playing with his toy trains. I turned on my computer to play my new game Diablo. While it was loading my son came up to me with what looked like chocolate on his hands. I said to myself where did he get chocolate and sniffed it. 
It wasn't chocolate. I turned around to see the most horrible sight of poop smeared over everything. It was a poo storm, Randy. The floors were the worst. We lived in an old farmhouse and the cracks between floorboards were like a centimeter wide and poop was pressed deep into them. I had to use a toothpick to SCRP it out. I learned a lesson that day. Obligatory not a parent. I was watching my sister's kids and told them we would grill for dinner and have pie. I went to the bathroom, came back, and the pie was all over the living room. When I asked them what happened, they told me it was daylight savings time, so dinner was now. I couldn't help but laugh. Edit, pack to back. Don't type before coffee, kids. This happened last year as we were in lockdown. My two children, eight and two, were jumping on the bed. I walked in, scolded them and they stopped. Not two steps out of me leaving the room, I hear the springs again and the worst scream in the world. Evidently, eldest pushed youngest in excitement, a bit too hard, and youngest had hit her eyebrow hard against the side cupboard. It was bloody anarchy, rushed to the emergency room with screaming from baby the entire drive. And only one of us could go in. Ended up needing plastic surgery and lucky to have full eyesight with her crushed in skull. Edit. Word. Greater than I walked in, scolded them and they stopped. To be fair, if I were injured with very hot liquid or steam, I'd stop jumping on the bed too. Sorry to drop a tragic story, but here goes. It wasn't me, but someone who worked right across the hall from. They had a bed at window height. Young baby was on the bed and the window was open. He turned away for a second to address his other kid. Baby is missing. Baby fell two or three stories out the window and died in impact. Needless to say the dad took quite a bit of time off worm after that and wasn't the same after. I didn't even know how to talk to him anymore, it that we were ever closer, but it's always at the forefront of your mind even when making small talk. When I was five, my friend that lived a few doors down went on holiday with his parents. They were staying on a resort that had a cabaret, entertainment bar. His parents went up to do a karaoke duet one evening and left him with the group of friends they had made whilst on holiday. In the time they were singing the song he'd wandered off. They found him ten minutes later in the resort pool, drowned. It was ages before my mum told me the true story. She initially just said that he had to go live with some relatives to be near his new school. Edit. Thank you for all the kind words. That was almost 40 years ago, and I've not thought much about since my mum told me the truth. But, thinking back I can remember my mum being really insistent that me and brother learn to swim and she has paid for all the swimming lessons for my four kids, now all teens and excellent swimmers. It appears it certainly affected my mum much more than me. A friend I've known since the seventh grade had a toddler drown in a five-gallon bucket. Before that she was a picture-perfect suburban housewife, happy as a lark. Wound up running off to Alaska and living in remote cabin for a few years. Then she came back to the lower 48 and seemed to be doing better, but then joined a cult and cut herself off from her family. At age 48, she has recently emerged from the cult and rejoined her family, but her sister tells me that she could fall off the ledge again at any moment. When I was a kid my mom was watching me play while hanging laundry. When she turned to hang a garment I discovered a bouncy spot in the grass and fell down a 100-ish year old abandoned well. She said that day took years off her life. Edit. So much Reddit attention. I'm blushing and my hands are sweaty. I have social anxiety and now I feel like everyone is looking at me. I'm trying to answer everything I can. Jessica? No, I'm not baby Jessica. I actually fell down the well in 1984 before it was cool. Did you make it out? Yes, the fire department eventually showed up. This was pre-911 and my mom told my sister call the fire department but she was five so she hid under the bed instead after my mom called them. They ignored all safety protocols to get me out before their supervisor showed up and made them do it the safe way, which I'm told would have taken a really long time. Instead they just tied a guy to some ropes and lowered him in. Edit. Some of you might find it interesting but 20 years later, almost to the day, I ended up meeting my rescuer completely by accident at a work event for our local fire department. I asked if I could try the boots on, and when they asked why, I explained that boots and worms were most of what I remember about the whole experience of falling down a well. Turns out the story had been told around the firehouse a bunch, and the actual rescuer was standing 15 feet away from me. I got to shake his hand and everything. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun.
please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.